There was two red objects low over Grafton heading towards the east, close enough to see they weren't host devices. This was a 50 minute daylight sighting one Saturday afternoon. Must have been approximately 100 objects on the move this afternoon. This was a cluster UFO. There was several of these and carrying black objects. This is a triangular shaped one carrying a black object, possibly a second one underneath as it rolls over. Here's a close up of the cluster. The large white one on the top seemed to be uh, the boss of the group trying to keep them all in order. They were a light pinky colour. You see the large one bobbing around. This is with a handheld camera. Just slowly meandering over the western boundary of Grafton in northern New South Wales. First time I'd seen this type of object in the daytime. Uh, these are very similar to the fleet footage objects seen in Mexico. They seem to be a space critter. This particular one went in front of a cloud and it stood out the profile. I was able to get a good look at this one as far as zooming it in against the cloud. One was a cylinder shape, the other one was slightly triangular. Sometimes they are singular objects or in a small group or the clusters. There was red and uh, spectrum blue, looked very beautiful against the blue sky, the spectrum blue ones, like rainbow, perfect, perfect blue. All heading from the south towards the north. There was silvery ones that looked like um, reflecting sunlight, like off a mirror and uh, white, slightly blue, slightly pink, and the black ones. Night time there was um, low altitude objects that flared right up like this. I think they may have been uh, a probe of some sort. They seemed to fly over the, the town built up area and flare up like that and then slowly fade out. Some objects move fairly quickly during the daytime. There was a hive of UFO activity when move fairly quickly. I put um, stories in the newspaper to try and get some attention and make the public aware that there was UFOs around if they wanted to see them to get out. Now's a good time to try and see them for yourself. I had lots of people ring me up. Um, after having my phone number in the newspapers, radio stations around the place were contacting me. Even the rescue helicopter was seeing unusual things. I'd write up a story and present it to the local newspaper and they'd publish it pretty well the way that I'd written it. It was a very interesting time. really only had a um, 35mm still camera to take photos at uh, the first lot, this was part of it. It was um, a disc shaped UFO leaving a, tr a 
trail of energy behind it uh, color print film and I had to scan it and enlarge it and try and get the images out of the emulsion this looked like to be a disc the blue at the background is uh, the uh, overcast sky it's using fractal zooming to enlarge this small pinpoint of light and that's uh, the disc shape of the object and all I could see at the time was that bright light this was a group of a couple of um, UFOs heading towards the south probably around 5,000 feet altitude this, this was one object if I remember rightly or it might have been a, a group of formation it's been hard to, to remember maybe a formation this the black area there would be the energy surrounding it it's a graphic of when I first saw UFO close encounter in 1970 made me aware that uh, they're quite prepared to come very close this was just a, a, an orange light in the sky that's like the formation I saw the very first time with 19 objects in staggered formation in a boomerang formation the whole formation was surrounded by a white haze of energy sometimes they'd fly extremely low over Grafton this is a graphic and uh, just over rooftop very very stealthy you wouldn't see them unless you're outside watching and had your eyes trained for the night uh, observing the dark sky at night I sky watched as much as I could in early afternoon a low altitude object I think these were probes I don't think they were all these were alien spacecraft containing aliens I think they were alien type technology because they were all around at the same period of time there were a lot of hoax devices garbage bag Chinese lantern type objects being uh, launched and let loose over town it took me a while to wake up to these what they were but this particular object is a um, star like object moving low altitude towards the uh, east directly over the business district of Grafton City lots of people must have seen these that's very low altitude moving so slowly that's an enlargement of the object I had software where it could stabilize it and super zoom to try and get a look at the source of the illumination or the shape of the object still hard to determine what it is because it's such small data in that small amount of uh, illumination in that video footage but uh, the super zooming was interesting process but not overly successful with such a small source of uh, data another object moving either to the east or to the north quite bright very obvious in the night sky this one is a very low altitude one just east of uh, the Grafton City moving to the north so low and close you, could, you had to view it through the tree foliage certainly not at satellite height, satellite height probably 1500 feet altitude maybe 2000 but still very low they just fade out you wouldn't see them it's like they had a job to do over the t built up area the town area and then when they'd finished they just the illumination would just die out wouldn't know which way it went then
almost stopping this one very slow moth flying past the camera this would have had night shot Sony camera with night shot very very slow that one that's a, a helicopter and a UFO went past it the red circle uh, identified where the object is, the UFO helicopter and there's the UFO it was heading north I wonder if the helicopter actually saw that here's another probe illuminating using a handheld camera, a bit shaky <laughs> another one flaring right up sometimes I would get that close you could almost feel the light on your face even though it would not illuminate the area around you towards the coast this one was very early in the evening uh, quite low very slow overhead I just missed it from overhead walked out the back door of the house and here it is just gone over very slow and uh, probably 40-50 centimeters in diameter because that's what I think they were gathering information over the city when they flare up I would imagine the, uh, the light would have illuminated the town area so they could record what's going on there possibly even though the, the light is not like a searchlight or a bright light that was going to illuminate the area it didn't. Uh, they don't seem to be able to illuminate the surrounding area it's a strange sort of light still quite slow another one flare up it's quite close to get a uh, good enlargement of it look at that brilliant Numerous people saw them and reported them, some put report to the police, some to the newspapers, some reported to me and seeing them myself I was able to explain that they're, um, they're unidentified just that we have, they're not ours they're, I can't define what they really are but um, I can't explain what they are it's just that they're something unusual in the sky and we can't identify them There's lots of, I filmed and witnessed about 50 events of these garbage bag, a fire lighter, hoax devices I call them a reddish in colour, orangey red colour and they'd slowly drift over the cities of Australia I think um, this, I saw the people that uh, launched this, there was two people in a car at the end of the road I was able to witness them releasing it, I didn't know what they were doing with a light in front of their car at first and then they 
launch this object and I watched it until it sort of caught fire itself and burnt out as it was falling to the ground so it's a very dangerous exercise to be letting these things off because you can start a major fire so if you're listening and thinking of making these don't do it it's too dangerous I went back the next morning to see if I could find this on the landed in uh, farming paddock and I was unable to f see anything I would say probably the people that let it off because it landed they would have observed it because it landed and on the ground they probably went and retrieved it didn't want to leave the evidence behind so close to town but eventually did retrieve one and fell in a uh, people's backyard that I was communicating with that's a good example of one you can see the shape of the it's a wheelie bin garbage bag with a wire hoop along the opening and uh, a piece of wire attached with a wax petroleum fire lighter or a jiffy fire lighter speared onto the 8 gauge wire usually or the stiff wire and uh, that's illuminated and um, it rises like a hot air balloon and drifts in the wind Chinese lantern there's four and it's a double they've got a two meter or six foot piece of wire hanging down underneath the main structure with a second fire lighter attached to that these four are called the uh, Hague's device doubles and they were he heading right directly towards me he drifting to the west they drifted in a, a draft where it changed direction at 90 degrees and they then drifted towards the south after a while they sort of drifted apart and further on they they'd go out one by one and then they got into another air current and drifted back to the east again just following air current stay illuminated for around 10 minutes 10-12 minutes use your observation time of 8 minutes major sighting this was the first one I observed during this 50 minute daylight sighting cluster UFOs orbs, I think they're a living critter of some sort carrying black ones the black ones were attached to the outside of the group as if they were carrying them may have been newborn or injured or something special maybe like the queen bee whatever the black ones were they were special that's what it appeared to be another one in the distance behind it up the top there a little bit further west of this larger cluster beautiful clear blue sky nice sunny day and the 50 minute observation of approximately these hundred of these objects moving towards this uh, north a rare event but I did see more after this into the early 2000s daytime waves of UFOs in 1999 the disk activity finished and these orbs uh, were more prevalent after the 1999 in, in, uh, disk activity finished
Nobody else um, contacted me and reported this event. So it's highly possible that I was the only one in in that uh, Grafton City area that observed these. Because my phone number was with the newspaper and the radio station. And, um, yeah, I don't think anybody else actually observed it. It's using an 8mm analogue camera, not as sharp or as much contrast as the digital camera in um, the modern digital cameras. We've got 4K cameras now with higher resolution, but these uh, old analogue cameras were pretty, pretty low resolution really. This one's got a bit of pace about it, moving towards the um, west slightly and uh, profiling against the cloud. Got a dark object there now. Upright cylinder, like a 44 gallon drum. Upright. Self illuminated to a certain degree. second one which was a uh, like an upright triangle a bit of an orangey color color doesn't quite come out in the video but a, uh, an enhanced still off the video shows that the tinge of orange They're not very large. These orbs were possibly um, under a metre in diameter in real life. A metre to an under, under a metre. And they didn't make any noise either. Very silent. Be interesting to know what they use for propulsion. That's the whole thing about UFOs. How do they do it? The cloud base was approximately 3,000 feet altitude, so these were under the cloud base, under 3,000 feet. Probably 1.5 to 2,000 feet, that's all.
slow as going. shaky old tripod at the taking this and uh, after this event I bought a new Monfrato tripod that was much easier and smoother to operate. This one was a bit closer. like it might have been a pinkish one with a bit of an orange hue about it. Just west of overhead. Cluster. This was a tr slightly triangle cluster with the two in the background. This uh, cluster was interesting because it rocked, had a rocking motion and carrying the black one like it was sitting on, on the top of it and the second one underneath it. When it rolls over a bit it, uh, you, it, it shows the second black object underneath. It pops into view momentarily. It'd be funny if that was a pilot sitting there, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, just got a glimpse on the left hand side. There's the second one there. Yeah, very unusual. like two or three orbs in a cluster that one. This is a nice large cluster. Several objects, large white one bouncing up and down at the rear of it and a black one attached to the top. And uh, the other objects were pink and blue, very very soft colouring. Pink, blue, white and black objects rolling around one another as if uh, keeping them in tight formation. The larger white ones seem to be the boss or keeping the others in order. Thank you. 
This object was almost stationary and directly over Grafton City. It changed direction towards the west, then continued north at a very slow pace. This was the last object of this 50 minute sighting. There were many more objects further west all heading north. You may have noticed some of these in the background. There could have been 100 objects on the move during this time. This was certainly one of the most amazing UFO sightings that I have ever witnessed and probably the longest sighting outside of Mexico and with so many objects in the one event. At this point in time, the skies are quiet, but one thing is for sure, the UFOs, the UFOs will return.